I made a thing today, an analog rotary encoder that's also going to be a four-way hat switch, which is a bit interesting. There's nothing like that in existence that I'm aware of. So not only is it going to be an analog rotary encoder, which in itself is a rare deal, uh, it's also going to be a four-way hat switch with the potential, if I can get the programming right, to also be uh, like a thumbstick or a joystick. So, I mean, there's no real reason why I couldn't detect analog um, values going up to the right or the lower left here or all around. Uh, so in theory, it should work, right? But really all I'm going for is a four-way hat switch, you know, just tilt it forwards or tilt it to the left if you want to send uh, a particular button press in any given of the cardinal directions. So let me go up the rent the uh, 3D view. And here you can see it's got an LED in the center. And that's one thing that's different from my uh, RISCI board uh, because basically I'm pushing it <laughs> when it comes to power on my RISCI board 70. So I, I opted not to put an LED under there because <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I'm already using enough power on that thing. Uh, another difference is this uses four Hall Effect sensors, whereas my RISCI board 70 PCB only uses two. And really, you only need two to make a uh, an analog rotary encoder. You just could have one that's in the center while the other is halfway. So it always produces two um, sine waves that are just a little bit offset from each other. That way you can detect um, what direction the uh, encoder is rotating and you know, going to the right or to the left. But these extra Hall effect sensors should enable uh, more accuracy, but that's not really the point. The point is to enable a four-way hat switch function so that when you tilt it forwards, you should be able to detect the voltage should go down or up on one of these and the opposite. So if it goes down on the top one, we'll say it should go up on the bottom one, right? At the same time. And that should let me detect uh, like a button press going north, south, east, and west, that sort of deal. And I've also, and I basically made this little breakout here uh, at the top here. That's an EC 11 rotary encoder. Like, so you can see, how big it is compared to this little one that I've made. They're about the same size. I guess technically mine will stick out a little bit more, just like a half millimeter. But if you count these little legs, then mine's actually a little smaller. <laughs> so the plan is to get like some, you know, a 3D print that just is like an X pattern here over the top and provide some mechanism for my um, little ring of magnets to rotate freely. I can't use a bearing like I did on the Risky Board 70 because there's not enough room. And there's also not a shaft going down the center uh, for like a screw. So it's going to be interesting to design a 3D model that will go over this um, while also retaining a nice tactile forward, backward, left and right motion. Um, but it, should be, it shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be too bad. Now let's go back to the board itself so I can talk about that, turn off the uh, traces here. We've got three headers here, and there's a reason for that, that they're all not just in one place. And the big reason is that um, you want your analog signals to be separate from your digital signals. So down at the bottom here, we've got nothing but analog, right? And the sides are for the LEDs. And you'll notice that I've got VDD here and then VDDDA for the sensors. So this is just your 5-volt power for the LED. And down here, you've got whatever you're using to power your um, Hall Effect sensors, either 5 volts or 3.3. And the key there is to make sure that it gets its own dedicated um, LDO. Just like I talked about the big change I made to the Risky Board uh, 70 PCB the other night. And I just noticed that like these look off. See that? I tried to make sure that this was centered. But apparently the ground pen, you see that blue? It cuts over, but not over here. Is that just because? No, that's weird. Something about the 2.5 millimeter spacing. I might need to move that. I might need to get my... Uh, measurements right anyways not a big deal shift this to the right so yeah that's what i've been working on and this should let you put um a rotary hall effect sense sort of rotary encoder analog rotary hall effect <laughs> let me say that again an analog hall effect rotary encoder into just about anything with this nice little breakup board i haven't put any text on it yet but eventually i'm going to put this somewhere i mean there's a lot to say um maybe i'll just put my little logo up here and then put the description on the back i don't know it's not too sophisticated if you think about it. It's just four signal pins. Um, the code is going to be real sophisticated. That's the hard part. Let me tell you something. Like Putting the little chips on a board like this is pretty easy compared to writing the code that can turn analog signals into rotary encoder motion. Fortunately, I've already figured it out. What I haven't figured out is the, um, you know, the tilt 
code forward, backwards, left, right, whatever. But we've got LED in and LED out. And that's what this is all it is. Just power LED in, LED out. So you could daisy chain them together, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's four signal pins for the analog controls and the rest is just power. So that's what I've been working on. I put that together today. Uh, when I first had it, I just had the two holes. And then I realized this is going to be, you know, people are going to be pushing and pulling on it. I better put four. So that's, that's why it may look a little bigger than it probably needs to be. If I just put like the two holes or maybe I could put one in the center and then cut it off. I don't know. Four seems better. I'd love to hear everybody's opinion on that. I mean, it is a rotary and like a hat switch sort of thing. It needs to be strongly mounted. Uh, these are M3 holes. It probably only needs M2. Uh, I don't have too many M2 screws though. <laughs> But I've got tons and tons. I've got every kind of M3 you could imagine. I've even got like taper head and, you know, all I've got everything. If it's M3, I've got it probably, you know, I've got all lengths and sizes, but M2, I just got a tiny little box. I've only got so many different kinds. And I still don't like to make things with M2 slots. <laughs> it's best, best to stick with um, M3, I think. Uh, it's only a millimeter bigger, right? So yeah, that's what I've been working on. And I'd love to hear everybody's feedback because nobody's ever made anything like this before. Um, so maybe there's some sort of like caveat that I'm missing. Like maybe there, maybe there's like some big problem that I'm not seeing here. Uh, but in reality, I, sh I think I should be able to just design a 3D model that, you know, that, like a little shaft mechanism that this can sit on, preferably with a click, you know, click, 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 click all around um, that you can also tilt forward and back. I'll have to come up with some clever way to do that. I'll probably use magnets. <laughs> I wanted to make it so that when you tilt it to the left, it, you know, it does that um, magnetic separation. And then when you tilt to the right, magnetic separation, and then forward and backward, also magnetic separation. But the only problem there is I really need the plate here to just sort of like tilt one way. So if it's up here, let's assume that it's like resting right here, right? And then we push it forward, it needs to just tilt. So it's like an angle like that, right? So that way I can tell that it got further away from this um, sensor and then closer to this one and vice versa when it gets tilted the other way, right? So that means I need the axis of um, tilting to be like up here in the center. And that doesn't give me much room in terms of um, where I can put little magnets to give you give it a nice tactile feel. But um, I should be able to come up with something, I hope. Um, I know it's kind of silly, but I'm just going to order it. <laughs> and then when I get here, I'll fuck around and open scan until it works. <laughs> because, that, you know, I can't really imagine too many other ways to design the circuit board, but I can imagine a million different ways to design the, the you know, the 3D models and whatnot in order to make this work. Even in my head, I'm thinking maybe maybe I don't even need these screw plates. I can just do clips and stuff. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I've been working on. I thought you guys might be interested. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This is definitely an experimental uh, electronics project. <laughs>